Hi, I'm Joe Feeks, editor of Poultry Health Today, and with me is Gregorio Rosales. He is a veterinarian and a poultry health consultant based in Athens, Alabama. It's great to see you. Thank you. Now, I know you know people throughout the world, and you do a lot of consulting. You've been getting a lot of questions, not just about mycoplasma, but specifically mycoplasma in broilers. What's driving that? Yes. Uh there seems to be a resurgence of mycoplasma in novi uh, around many broiler operations around the world, and there may be some interesting reasons why that is happening. And it appears that with the trend of producing more and, and more uh, broiler products without antibiotics, all of a sudden with less antibiotics, some operations are discovering that uh, some of the flocks are infected with mycoplasma synovia. And why specifically synovia? Well, uh, I don't know why, but uh, what is interesting is that the mycoplasma synovia that is being reported and some of the outbreaks that are occurring in some areas is a, a much more pathogenic mycoplasma synovia that that we had seen before. For instance, some of the outbreaks are causing production drops in the broiler breeders. Uh, they even uh, causing some uh, shell quality problems. And uh, in the broilers, uh, uh, then there are the typical problems with some respiratory disease, uh, birds that they are uh, having problems with uh, uh, reduced performance, affecting feed conversion, uniformity, some condemnations. And uh, it seems that some of these uh, uh, outbreaks, the mycoplasma synovia, is more pathogenic than we used to think the mycoplasma synovia was. And how long has this been going on? I would say probably the last four or five years. Which coincides perfectly with the increase in raising poultry without antibiotics, or at least making great reductions in antibiotics. Correct. And also, uh, speaking with some of my colleagues, and we were reviewing some of the other possible factors involved, uh, there's also been an increase in the use of live mycoplasma vaccines. Uh, and when operations started using uh, live vaccines against mycoplasma gallicepticum, they uh, uh, need to reduce the use of antibiotics because otherwise they will interfere with the vaccination against mycoplasma gallicepticum. And that has resulted in some of these flocks being exposed to mycoplasma serenovia. Also, the industry in many uh, parts of the world has been growing, and mycoplasma serenovia is typically seen in areas where there is a heavy concentration of birds. And sometimes in these areas, you have commercial layers, you have roller breeders, you have rollers in, in, in the same area, and that is conducive of more and more roller breeders being close to some of the flocks that are infected, uh, particularly commercial layers, and in many cases, uh, chickens that have been raised as uh, organic mm -hmm. or chickens that have been raised uh, uh, in backyard operations. And it looks like in some cases, uh, in some of these uh, backyard chickens, close to 60% of them, they have mycoplasma gallicepticon, mycoplasma synovia, and sometimes even both. And, and you were talking about the performance reductions in, in broilers. Uh, do you ever see mortality as well? Not so much mortality, but definitely an impact on uh, feed conversion. And then an increased incidence of respiratory problems, especially uh, in combination with other factors, other challenges like infectious bronchitis, uh, seasonal challenges with uh, cold months 
and uh, in some areas uh, avian influenza and then the combination results in more severe lesions, more air sac and then more uh, birds having to be condemned at processing time. And have you found a seasonal pattern at all? Yeah, usually uh, it's worse during the winter months and it's because there is reduced ventilation and there is more uh, moisture in the litter and that seems to be pretty consistent. So what are you recommending to producers right now? Ah, that's an excellent question and, and it's a combination of things. Uh, obviously, the ideal situation is to be free of mycoplasmas. And it starts from the breeders making sure that uh, companies uh, supply themselves with mycoplasma free stock and then that they keep those breeders free of infections throughout the rearing and production cycles. And in areas where is a high risk or, or, or is imminent that they're gonna get exposed to uh, mycoplasma synovia, vaccination with live mycoplasma synovia vaccine has been a very useful tool if it is used uh, correctly. And you talked about um, moist litter before. What has been your experience? I think when the conditions in the houses deteriorate and if the ventilation rates are not ideal and especially if people are not looking at what happens, not so much during the day, but during the night, that could uh, cause some very severe environmental challenges for the brawlers. And then if they are infected with mycoplasma, that just seems to be a really bad combination. Around the world, when uh, operations uh, see the need for uh, medication, usually they are things that they're used in the feed and the water. We got ourselves into this situation, or we may have gotten ourselves into this situation mm -hmm. by reducing the use of antibiotics in the first place. Right. What do we do about that? Do, well, we, do we rethink some of the, the practices that we've adopted over the last couple it, of years, or is this just a, a, a byproduct of, of this program that we're just gonna have to manage? I think, uh, Many operations, particularly in the U.S., and, uh, uh, they have recognized this and they're doing a much better job in doing the basic things correctly. They are really working on improving the chick quality, improving their management, improving the brooding conditions, improving the overall management, ventilation, uh, management of litter, and uh, I think in, in many cases that uh, I'm aware of that some operations in the U.S. Uh, have discovered some flocks uh, that they are MS positive. If they manage those flocks correctly, sometimes they don't need to medicate. And we all know that mycoplasma is not the only bacterium out there now that we are using fewer or in some cases no antibiotics, would you expect to see any other bacteria reemerge and be a problem in broilers? Since we're not using antibiotics in the feed, we've seen an increase of bacterial infections co caused by gram-positive organisms. And, and, and of course, you're very familiar that now in, uh, in this type of production system, we see more challenges with uh, clostridium causing uh, necrotic enteritis, clostridium that it could cause uh, gangrenous dermatitis, and in commercial layers they have a problem with uh, focal duodenal uh, 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 necrosis. So uh, also in brawlers we've seen some issues with another gram-positive organism that is called enterococcus. So it sounds like you're gonna have a lot to keep you busy. If we continue to work in doing the basic management correctly and doing the, the, the good things that we should have always done and that we're all familiar with, we can have great success and we can be very profitable in, um, in new systems of production that require no antibiotics.
We've been talking to Gregorio Rosales. He is a veterinarian and poultry health consultant from Athens, Alabama. Gregorio, always great to see you. My pleasure. Thank you.